Hi everybody, this video is about how to use your knights to attack two or more enemy targets at the same time. Before I start, I'd like to mention a couple of interesting features of the knight. First of all, since it's a minor piece and is of roughly the same material value as a bishop, it can favorably be traded for a bigger piece like a rook or a queen. Secondly, a knight placed on a central square can be very powerful. In the diagram, the black pawns indicate all the possible moves of a white knight placed in the middle of the board. A circle of 8 squares is formed, which indicates that the knight can reach any of these squares in one move. However, a knight on the edge of the board can reach only 4 squares, and a knight in the corner can reach only 2 squares. Hence, knights in these positions are usually very inactive. That's why knights are most effective when planted on central squares. A fork is a simultaneous attack on two enemy targets. The aim of this chapter is to help you recognize forking opportunities for your knight, in which the defender of the forking square is either pinned or distracted. In some cases, the forking square is unprotected. By now you must have figured that knight e7 check is the winning move for white. Now I will show you some real game examples. You can pause the video if you would like to find the best move yourself. Have a look at this position. It's white to play. Black has a queen and a bishop, while white just has a knight and a passed pawn. Black also threatens queen b1 checkmate. What can white do? White simply plays knight e7 check and wins the black queen. Check out this position. It's white to play. White has a fork on e7, but should he play it right away or is there something better in store? White can instead play rook captures rook, after which black is forced to recapture with the queen. And now knight e7 check is an extremely powerful move for white. And black really doesn't have much to play for now. Notice how white dominated by playing the sequence. Initially black had more material, but in the end he just lost. Here it is white to play. Sometimes a forking square, which looks well protected, may be susceptible to a fork. This usually happens when the defender of the forking square is pinned. Black's knight has a dangerous fork on f2, but f2 looks like it's protected by the white rook. However, the white rook is actually pinned to the king by the black queen. So black can go ahead and play knight f2 check and therefore win the queen. This is another position similar to the previous one. It's white to play. White simply plays knight d5 check without worrying about the harmless pawn on c6 which is pinned to its king. What would black play here? The white rook on e3 is pinned, not to his king but to his other rook on e1. If it moves, the battery of black rooks can capture white's other rook and hence win a rook for free. Thus, black should play knight f3 check and possibly exchange his knight for a rook. After knight f3 check, white has two options. He can either move his king out of check or capture the black knight with his rook. Either way, white loses material. This is another interesting position. It's black's turn. Black's knight has a fork on c2, which doesn't seem playable right now because of the white queen protecting c2. However, notice that once the knight moves, the white queen gets pinned to the king. Hence black plays the following sequence. Knight c2 check, king f1, queen captures queen, knight captures queen, and knight captures rook. And black has won a rook for free. Here the intermediate move of queen captures queen is of great significance. The sequence fails without this move. This is a wild position. It's white to play. Note that the black queen is about to deliver mate on h1. So white needs to do something about that. Well if you think about it, all he needs to do is take the pawn on c6. White simply plays knight c6 checkmate. This example shows that a counter-attack can be used to give you a crushing advantage and sometimes even checkmate your opponent. Have a look at this position. Think of what would happen if white played knight f7 check. Once the knight moves to f7, the black bishop gets pinned to its queen and hence knight f7 check wins the black queen. <laughs> 